1876. A century of government policies target Native Americans. 371 treaties to keep them separate, isolated, remote. Most of America's 300,000 tribes people now live on government assigned lands, reservations. But resistance is still fierce. I think probably the darkest spot in our history, for me at least, uh, is what happened to the Native Americans. We came here and confiscated their homeland. I think we have a real sense now of what our part was in that. One that I would love to see redefined, rewritten. Across the Great Plains, the federal government acquires millions of acres of the Native Americans' traditional hunting ground to make way for the Iron Horse. The Sioux are forced deep into the Black Hills. As a young boy, Black Elk witnesses the coming of the railroad and the destruction of the buffalo herds. Now, age 12, he's about to be part of the Sioux Nation's last triumph. White men come in like a river. They told us that they wanted only a little land. But our people knew better. Gold is heard in the Black Hills. 100,000 prospectors rush in to seek their fortune. The federal government wants to clear the area. On a reconnaissance mission with the 7th Cavalry, Lieutenant Colonel George Custer stumbles across the Sioux camp near the Little Bighorn River. Custer makes a fateful decision. With 700 soldiers, Custer charges a camp with 7,000 Native Americans. Within three hours, all the men in Custer's regiment are dead. The Sioux win the battle, but will lose the war. In response, U.S. soldiers force 3,000 Sioux warriors onto reservations. The rest scatter in small bands. Over the next 14 years, the Plains Indians struggle to survive until the incident that finally defeats the great Sioux nation. Wounded Knee is a great, great uh, scar on the American uh, landscape. December 29, 1890. The last band of independent Sioux surrender beside Wounded Knee Creek. As the cavalry disarms them, a gun goes off accidentally. It triggers a massacre. Within minutes, over 200 Sioux warriors, women and children are dead. Now 27, Black Elk survived. When I look back now, I can still see the butchered women and children lying heaped and scattered, as plain as when I saw them with eyes still young. And I see that something else died there. A people's dream died there. It was a beautiful dream. <laughs> 